Thank you for checking in to Fern and Threads. I am Helen. And I'm Katty. And we're a mother-daughter sewing team from a ferny corner of Melbourne. <laughs> um, and today we're going to talk about the Melbourne Frogtails event that we went to the weekend before last. Um, who we met, what we did, and of course what we wore. And what we drank. Yes, and what we drank. <laughs> Although we don't have cocktails with us today. No, well, that's a good thing because I'm doing some pattern cutting out this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah. But, but before Frogtails, and I thought that was really clever, they yeah. did a, a shopping tour, a shopping tour of fabric shops. And I thought that was a great idea because yeah. not only did we get to buy fabric, which of course is <laughs> our favourite thing, but we also got to meet some of the people who were going to be at Frogtails. And as we'd never been to a Frogtails before, it really did break the ice, didn't yeah. it? We did the fabric shopping tour and we discovered a couple of shops that I didn't know existed, um, including the back of Livia Arena, where I don't know about you, but I bought some beautiful I bought some fabric. fabric. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was um, that was sort of what we did during the day. And then we had lunch with Jo at, um, in, Fitz, in Fitzroy. At Smith & Daughter. At Smith & Daughter. Where we had a brilliant cocktail. I did not. I had a lovely cup of jasmine <laughs> tea. Um, and then we went off to the Airbnb we'd rented and fuzzied up. Fuzzied up? That's not what I meant. Fancied up? Fancied up. That's not that quite what, what I meant. I don't know. And got ready. Frocked up. <laughs> Frocked up. Frocked up. Um, what was your favourite dress from the weekend? Of oh, someone else's. Yes, no, obviously, of someone else's. Well, there were so many beautiful frocks. There was that glorious um, floor length that looked like an Oscar carpet frock with the back, with the lace back. That was. I don't think I know which one you're talking about. That was extraordinary, but you know, I would never wear it. Um, the there was also um, the pink ensemble with flowers, the floral pink ensemble, you do know, you know that one, the flowers, the dress, the woman who got photographed. Oh, that she had, that two, it was a two piece that could be made yes. into a dress, that was that really was cute. That was really yeah. cute. And so, um, other favourite dresses, um, I really liked the, um, oh, I don't know her name, I really loved Steph's dress. That was, that was you just stole my favourite. <laughs> well, you can talk about Steph's dress. Steph um, is the lovely owner of Fabric Deluxe. Um, and she was wearing this beautiful high-necked velvet dress that was... Um, Midnight blue. It was not blue, it was green. No. We're going to argue this whole thing. We're going to argue. <laughs> it okay. It was, a, it was a bluey green colour. And it was very dark. And it was very dark in Campari House, True. which is where the event was held. Um, it was a teal blue. Okay, I think we've got the fact that you're right and I'm wrong. That's fine. <laughs> um, and it had ruching up the sides and then it was quite short at front. But it, it had like a long... Because the pattern kind of wraps around in panels. And that happened on I the skirt as well. I think we're talking about the wrong person. No, we're not. I'm talking about the woman who had the high... It was a high neckline, very fitted. she had fitted, a little fringe. Very fitted. Yes. And, and she had a fringe and a hair up in the bun. Yeah. So it's the same dress. So it's a body con dress, but the way that the pattern is constructed, which you couldn't tell, oh, but she talked okay, me through it sure, and you let's like, sure. have a look at it closely. Sorry. So it has panels that wrap. So uh, when it came to that ruching at the side, I think it was ruched or something at the side, mm -hmm. um, that panel was still wrapping around. So it was asymmetrical hem. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. It sort of looked it was beautiful. Star Trek come femme fatale. Yeah, definitely it, film noir. Yeah, yeah it was, it was great. Yeah, yeah, I loved that one. We both I loved also that. Um, loved, um, there was another Instagram I will link down below who was wearing um, an African wax print uh, pantsuit. Jump, jumpsuit. jumpsuit. Yeah, and pantsuit. she had her hair done in like a beautiful vintage style and she'd made a matching headband to go with it that matched the jumpsuit and that, that was was just so elegant. Like it, it, she really mm -hmm. stood out, I think, because it was just so well put together and yeah, gorgeous. And Jo was wearing that kind of um, Halton neck, wonderful 50s. 50s style, but also... The fabric. The fabric was sort of pop art meets the sewing community. It was sewing really funny. Comic, yeah. It was great. <laughs> it was terrific. 
And she had on a really lovely... Beautiful necklace, which is being re-released. That jeweler is re-releasing, but she's re-releasing that specific yes. one because it is sold out. So we will link that down yes, below because it's will. great. And I missed out on all of her Christmas necklaces and I'm gutted because they were really cool. She's not really re-releasing those. Um, so there were, but there were so many the, really, yeah, it was really lovely dresses. There were two people, two women who were in the same fabric and almost, almost and similar one. silhouettes, let's say the same silhouette yeah. in this gorgeous, um, sort of green tropical print, which was really, floral, wasn't tropical, it was, it was floral. <laughs> yeah, uh, but that was, it, that was beautiful, that was yeah. beautiful. I was interested because I hadn't been before. I was initially very trepidatious about the whole cocktail element, but there was such a wide variety of styles that I needn't have worried. There were sort of people who were just, you know, beautifully dressed, but it wasn't particularly glam, but they were yeah. stunning. And then there was sort of the glam, um, the glam yeah. kind of end of that. And there was someone who'd done a Prada knockoff. Which was extraordinary with pom poms and pom pom earrings. Oh, the pom poms were great. Like, I, I was, was so jealous. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a knockoff of a Prada. Oh, I didn't yeah, realize that. Absolutely. They look really cool. So, yeah. yeah, and the whole thing she'd um, she pleated all the sheer fabric oh. on on her like on the dress, and then wow. sort of sewn it. Oh, in I wish I'd spoken to her about that. Yeah, yeah. and then the um, woman we sat with who had made that dress with the buttons, the back and the buttons. The beautiful three the bat from Baton Mania. Lib Lib. Lib, Lib. That was yeah. a gorgeous dress. That was a really lovely she, dress. Yeah, she looked great. And she had yeah. a pin that was a martini glass. Yes. That matched it beautifully. Yes. And my... We should one have of our questions is, martini. We should. <laughs> one of my questions um, for us today was a highlight from the weekend, um, which definitely for me was when I sat down at that table and she asked if I was oh, Helen Fern yes. and Thread and then said that she loved Sovino. So shout out to her if you're watching this. <laughs> well, a highlight for me, I think, was... Um, well, it was certainly meeting Anne from Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> because that was great. Fancy going all the way to Frocktails and meeting someone from one suburb away who is a spinner, a spinner and has been a member of the Spinners and Weavers Guild. I, I just, my, my heart raced faster. Yeah. Um, and also... Um, we should say that if you're in the hills, look out for a, a spinning group starting yes, at Belgrave Library. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And the other highlight was meeting Rachel and... Um, her little her little crew because she's from Warrigal yeah. and she so said lovely. immediately that she had a sewing machine and could travel, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was really fun because I'm thinking of starting craft afternoons, so yeah. it was sort of a perfect combination for me to meet those people and it was just a lovely, lovely, friendly event. Everyone was very supportive. Everyone was very. Um, no one sort of judged your hemline and kind of because <laughs> like, oh. I was really worried about that. I think my. Um, my favourite um, thing about the event as a whole was that fact that you're walking into a room full of women and no one's being competitive, everyone was mm -hmm. just supporting everyone. And I kept saying on the night, it's like, it's so good. Because whenever we're out together, we always are like, look, like, <laughs> dress, <laughs> dress 12 o'clock. <laughs> but you trying not to say 12 o'clock, no, I never know you wouldn't get it. <laughs> Um, you, but we always have this secret, and I'm sure you guys too. And um, it was just lovely to be somewhere where you could openly check out people's yeah, outfit and, or like tug on their dress or try and feel. The and fabric people would and, tell you how they made them and what it was, what it yeah. was made from, which yeah. was just lovely as well. Yeah. And it was fun pattern spotting. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, which is another fun. dress actually. Um, there was a lovely woman who is the creative director at Linkraft who was oh, there. Yes. And she was wearing a sew over it, um, oh, Joan dress, Joan dress, <laughs> um, in this gorgeous fabric she bought in Japan, in Japan that had um, cat's kitten in it, but it was all really dark and it was really witchy, mm. and that was another favourite dress. Yeah. Mm. Well, I think my most exciting conversations were kind of for future plans with the, yeah. the spinners, and um, Anne said she always went to Harrietville, which sewers won't know, but is a big spinning knitting event in Victoria and I thought hmm hmm, hmm. Um, and also um, you know just just that that kind of sense of community and yeah. sense of belonging to the community it was just great yeah, yeah for sure well so of course one of the big highlights of the night is always apparently um, 
The goodie bag. The goodie bag. <laughs> the goodie bag, but also the um, lucky door prizes. Yes. Which were amazing. We were unlucky. <laughs> we were unlucky. But next but time. Good. Yeah. And I was just so impressed with the um, amount of sponsorship the event yeah. gets from the sewing community. It, it was, was wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, it was so The good. goodie bags were very exciting. So we have one. Um, obviously well, we not full. Two. We have an empty. Yeah, we had two. <laughs> An empty one. Um, so what I thought was really cool was the eco-focus of the night yeah, as well. Was... So the goodie bags actually double up as a little veggie bag for um, saving on plastic when you're going grocery shopping, which is great. But they also have the but they also have and Frog Tales logo, logo, which I thought was lovely. Um, and the whole event was straw free. Um, so Mobile and Frog Tales organised that um, with Campari House and also with, and I can't remember. Blogless Anna. Blogless Anna. <laughs> Provided the iridescent unicorn straws, someone yeah. is calling them, with a little cleaning brush, which, which I'm so cool. super impressed with, the cleaning brush, because that's really I'm thoughtful. really impressed with the colours. I love yeah. that kind of like, It's a gorgeous shiny. Yeah. And if you are feeling sugar deprived, underwired. Oh. Yes. Underwired so squirrel, <laughs> underwired um, are the little, the little, um, do they say oil lollies that yeah. say things like, they just say underwired. Underwired. <laughs> .co. Um, but there we go. <clears throat> and so Squirrel also provided the delicious cheese platters. Yeah, they were. They so were good. sensational. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then another um, another person who was a great supporter of Frog Tales this year was Arrow Mountain, um, who we've both bought stuff from Arrow Mountain before. In like the past. it's just a brilliant. Brilliant company, small business. Um, and so um, the next Sovino episode is going to feature some very special buttons from Arrow Mountain. Um, and also they do sell these little um, bamboo hem guides. Yeah, I've so just bought one. So you can fold over an iron straight on them, which is yeah. great. So yeah, we'll link their shop. Hems are my bête noire. <laughs> but I hate hems. You I should don't... have seen us hemming oh, over. Oh, it was a nightmare. No, I really hate hems. So I yeah. have just gone on. I've bought buttons and one of the hem gauges. And they also have this super cool origami packaging yeah. for everything. So they did some buttons specifically for the events. Come on, you're almost there. There we go. Melbourne Frocktails 18. My hand massively shaking. <laughs> So they were a lovely little memento. They were great. They yeah. were fair. And it was so lovely to get that because it's something that, you know, you'll always remember the event by. Yeah. Won't you? Yeah. And similarly, um, I, I misplaced mine, not lost it. Kylie in the Machine. Yeah. Had woven labels. Yeah. Super and mine cool. said, Your mama made this. <laughs> I can't Which remember. Was I was. I'd had too many cocktails when I opened my goodie bag, and I can't I can remember. I can almost remember what you said. But I think it was pink. Mm, I'm not sure. It was super cute. But they're great, and she's got a lot more in her um, Etsy yeah. shop or her sorry, her web website shop. Uh, Very gold ticket. ticket. <laughs> so if you if you um, extend your heartfelt thanks to the sponsors and email each of them, then you go into the into the. Um, Raffle for the golden ticket, which ensures your place for next year's Frocktail. Yeah. And gives you a free ticket. Which is super lovely. Which like is a lovely. great way of giving back to yeah. the sponsors. Yeah. yeah. And we'd say we'd like to say a huge thank you to all of the sponsors as well because oh, you yeah. really made our night amazing and particularly yeah. to like to Steph from Fabric Deluxe actually and Kylie and the Machine just being there and, and introducing themselves to everyone. It was yeah, brilliant. It was really, great. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. We've got a nana creature in the background <laughs> making some noise. <laughs> there was a photographer who was sponsored by um, Crefield Digital Print, sponsored yeah. the photographer. So we had professional photo photographs um, that were completely free and he's put them all in Dropbox yeah, for you'll everyone see them. just to use and they're terrific. They're if you, really If good. you search the hashtag Melbourne Frocktails, mm -hmm. you'll see all these out there great. And yeah. I must say, I often look as I've just suffered a major, major traumatic illness and he managed to make me look he was a good fabulous so there yeah. you go yeah. <laughs> it was great um and campari house of course which is um where the event was held in hardware lane um i was genuinely like i am a cocktail and drink snob mm. in general um you and i don't expect much from from cocktails um it was a really good cocktail yeah, it wasn't those, too sweet it was perfect yeah it was it was fabulous it was really and the bar staff were they were so into it they, they were, were artists yeah i have never seen cocktails made 
with such loving care. Okay, so the dresses. Yeah, so I had two dresses. Yes, two dresses she was sewing right down the line. Yeah, I finished university the week before, um, so I was I being pretty stressed out. So yeah, I spent two days recovering. De-stressing. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the idea for my frocktails dress or dresses um, came from this Pinterest image that I'll put up on the screen now. Um, and I just fell in love with the shape of this dress, but I didn't have a specific pattern for it. So I, the fabric came from a friend who was decluttering and she used to own a clothing store up here. And it's this beautiful teal silk. So perfect. We think it's a silk chiffon, but perfect for that dress shape. <laughs> um, so I decided on the Vogue 9253. So it would have the plunging neckline. Um, and then I really wanted it to button up and have the split like the Pinterest picture. So I searched all on Instagram and I found this blogger who hopefully I'll put up on screen now who'd done a duster hack of it to make it into like a duster cardigan coat. Oh, thing. that was beautiful. Yeah, yeah gorgeous. Um, so basically for the Vogue, I essentially followed the pattern the whole way through, um, except that I closed the back seam the whole way and I left the front seam entirely open. Um, and then I was going to put a hooks and eyes down the front, but I didn't get around to that because I didn't have any hooks and eyes. Yeah. So I bought one and sewed it up in the Airbnb and just went with one hook and eye, we'll be fine. But that was, that was, that it worked. Looked, yeah. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only things that I did differently to the pattern on the Vogue dress was that I French seamed throughout, um, which obviously mm -hmm. took me twice as much time. Um, but was worth it because it makes it look much more professional and in the sheer fabric it needed that. I need to know how the French seam. So easy. It's easy once you know what you're doing. Mm. It's easy. And I if you Google the, the wits <laughs> every time oh. before you do it as well. Yes. Um, and so French seam throughout. I also used a lot of spray starch um, to help me mm. sew and cut out that fabric. And I cut everything. Because it's very sheer. It's very, very fine. Um, mm. And I cut everything in a single layer, just like one pattern piece at a time with a rotary cutter and no pins, just weights, mm. um, which helped a lot. I did end up, because of the process of cutting it out, cutting out two or cutting four front pieces instead of any back pieces. Oh, yeah. you didn't tell me this. Yeah, I didn't realise that until I was sewing it together. Oh. But luckily they're pretty much the same. It's just one has darts and one has... Or one oh. has a dart and one has pleats. So it was fine. Um, I also realised right at the end that the two skirt pieces I put at the back were actually a different colour to the rest that of was, the fabric. That was so funny, funny because you didn't know that till I took the photo. Yeah. The, that the afternoon... As we were walking, as we were to, the walking to Frog Tales, to the tram... From the Airbnb, I took a photo and I went, do you, do you know that there's two different colours happening here? Yeah. It's like a shade different, but... Yeah. yeah. Actually, it was lovely because it gave it that sort of... Yeah, and it almost, was just in the centre back panel, yeah. so it worked. Yeah, it like worked. It was, it was yeah. deliberate. Um, and I also, um, on the entire front seam going around the neck and all the way down to the ground, I did bias binding because I wanted it to have some weight and structure for the hooks and eyes to go in. That. Yeah, mm. and, and that worked really well with the front anyway. Oh, yeah, to, to hold give it, it give yeah, it a bit of weight. Otherwise, it would just fly. Yeah, which it did, did. fly there, <laughs> anyway. Um, and then for the slip underneath, um, because the entire dress on the top was all see through, I made a Miso Cami dress, which is a pattern from Paper Cut Patterns. And that was kind of a last minute idea mm. to do two dresses. So I made the Mito from some rayon that I just bought from Spotlight because I didn't have any time to get anything else. Um, and then I bought two packets of dye and I tried to do a little bit of a tie-dye oh, effect. Oh, so you bought... I was wondering how you did that. I thought the yeah. base colour must have been that, that sort of bluey no. grey. No, no. So I used the Rit Teal. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just did that for, I think, 15 to 20 minutes. It's all on my Instagram stories. You can see it. And then I scrunched up the fabric in the laundry sink and I threw on a gunmetal shade. Then I decided to do it in the laundry sink. But as I filled the laundry sink and got all the dyes in there already like pre-mixed, I realized that we didn't have any salt. So I had to, and I live with my 88 year old grandmother. So I had to be like, stay upstairs. Do not come into the laundry. <laughs> do not go near the white tiles and things at your feet level that you'll never ever see on the ground. 
<laughs> gave her strict instructions, and she didn't go in there, so it was it was fun. fun. It was drama free. And do not pull the plug on my. Yeah, <laughs> well, I hadn't put the dye in there yet, so uh, okay, it was just water. Um, so I dyed that, and then I made up the meter dress. So the spaghetti straps. Yeah, so the meter dress uses spaghetti straps, and then it has bra findings on that, so that they're mm -hmm. fully adjustable, which is good because it's such a low cut dress that you want to have that option to pull it up. Yeah, um, so, I, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Yeah, yeah so some people have made it smaller yeah. as well because of that. So I ended up using, um, because I didn't have any time to go out and get any, just an old bra and just cut the straps and use the findings from that, which is really good, actually. Yeah, that's fitting with the smart, purpose. Yeah, yeah, you're reusing all of those little bits of plastic, mm. so, and they oh, last awesome. forever. It's just... And I just... Um, sorry, have you finished? Almost. I was just going to say that one of the um, one of the door prizes was actually for someone who had reusing re yeah. a, a dress and made it into a new dress or yeah, something which is such a great idea. It was idea. a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that was just oh no, it's an aside. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So the back of the bodice on the meter dress of the top bodice, I hadn't cut on the fold, which meant that there was a seam down there, so that the the back of the skirt, the lower part of the dress was far too large to fit on that which meant that I ended up having to gather it to fit but actually oh that looks great it looks perfect yeah, yeah it, looks it works really well I actually, I actually thought that was a fe feature of the pattern yeah when, when I saw it I thought oh that's so smart those little pleats just add that bit of interest it just brings it yeah. in a little bit as well so the dress will put mm. some pictures up on the screen if you haven't already seen the pattern but it does hang down really flat, and I put a sway back, so I think yeah. having that little gather just brought it in a tiny bit, and oh, I thought it, it great. worked really well. Yeah. The other, I know what you were talking yes. about. The other um, issue I ran into with the meter was an issue of overconfidence. I had made a shirt that day, and I cut a perfect hem in one go, like recutting it, and so I put the meter dress on. Put a little chalk mark where I thought it would be fine, lay it out on the ground and cut off the whole bottom, put it back on and realise that it showed half of my ass. And that's where I got an instant message. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. So ah! <laughs> there is an unintentional bottom panel. But it, it does, it's, it looks okay. Again, it looks Actually, fine. Yeah. And the other thing is then when I hemmed, I didn't cut anything else off of it, I just hemmed it mm -hmm. and I kept on taking um, the length up at that join where I put the bottom mm -hmm. panel on and I think that's probably why it kind of flares out just a touch like you can barely see it but it's a faint mm -hmm. kind of movement mm -hmm. in it which actually looks really yeah. nice yeah I thought the whole thing looked lovely I must okay. say yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of it yeah. it worked really well I definitely will make both patterns again mm. um the other thing I wanted to say about the girl with the dress yes I want so it turned out on the night that there was another girl who was wearing the same Vogue dress, which I wasn't surprised by. Like, oh, no. Everyone's made that dress. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And she was actually wearing hers in almost the same, same colour. Color. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was really... It was but cool. the dresses look completely different. Yeah. So I she... mean, I would never have known had I not seen the original pattern. Yeah. I would not have known they were the same dress because yours was long. And yeah. hers was neat. She had cut hers to the shorter length available on the pattern, mm. and she otherwise hadn't changed it as far as I know. So she still that's, had the tie waist. That's right. And, had and the longer sleeves. sleeves yeah. Mine had cut the sleeves really short, um, and hers was done with the zip at the centre mm. back and everything. And it was open. a heavier fabric. So it really mm. looked quite different. Yeah, and hers looked gorgeous. Yeah, like it was absolutely. a beautiful colour yeah. and a beautiful fabric as well for that. Mm. It would, yeah, it worked really, really well. Mm. So it was cool to see the two different ones and often we just seem to always be standing kind of near each other and I think I freaked her out a few times because people would come up and ask me about my dress and I'd be like, that girl's wearing the same one but that's before I hacked it, you know, which <laughs> was, it was fun yeah. to be able to do that. Yeah, it was cool. And what about your dress? Well, my dress, um, I, I now have this theory of the wearable <laughs> twirl which um, is, is essentially can be a home dress and or a Belgrade dress and or a teaching in the neighbourhood centre dress. Then I go one step further and I make a, a CBD worthy dress. Um, and so I had bought the Patricia Rose pattern from Starlark 
which is quite a modest little dress. I'm wearing it now in my CBD worthy version. <laughs> um, I I hacked it in that it's it's just a plain. Um, it's all done in one fabric. Done in one fabric. Yeah. Um, so my my original toile was the was a broderie anglaise in a sort of turquoisey blue, which which I really love and I've worn at least yeah. three times already. And then this I had some of this in my stash, and I for some reason I have bucket loads of denim tinsel in my stash. I don't know how that happened. So um, I made it in this, and then I said this is the this is the dress I'm this is the pattern I'm going to wear, and I had some stone washed sand washed silk. Yeah, from, from Remnant, Remnant Warehouse. Warehouse, which is in a, a brown with polka dots. And it's beautiful white. Um, sand. I when we got that fabric, it was an order that was delivered to my house, and I was really tempted to pretend. Don't tell the accountant. I was really I tempted secret to secret it away. Dish. A secret delivery address. <laughs> yeah, I was really tempted to steal it for myself and not hand over. It's beautiful. It's, it's a really gorgeous. lovely fabric, and it sold out. Sorry. Yeah, it sold out really quickly. Um, and so that was so that was my third third version of the Patricia Rose dress, and I showed it to um, some friends on my regular knitting night, and they suggested it had to be lined, which sent me into a bit of a tiz. Um, so I leapt over to Spotlight and bought some very some cotton lawn. I didn't want to line it in anything synthetic because yeah. I was worried it would stick. Yeah, and it um, can be quite hot in November and, in yeah, Melbourne. It's, exactly. I didn't want anything. Yeah. I hate being hot. I didn't want anything hot. So I got a cotton lawn. I didn't obviously line the sleeves. I just lined the body of the, the dress. And yeah, I love it. I really like it. And despite all of her fretting, the lining went really well. The lining did go very yeah. well. The biggest, the major drama was the hem. Oh, and the slight... That we share. Um, <laughs> yes, the slight problem with the... In a fit of... In a fit of um, I don't know, absent-mindedness, not enough light in the garage, something, yes. I just cut the fold line of the back right up the middle and folded the sides. I don't know how I did that. Didn't realise till I got home what I'd done, fretted like crazy. Um, however, it's fine. You can hardly tell. Yeah, it worked really. It Nobody really said fun. anything. Nobody said, oh, you've got a centre seam up the middle of that. In fact, because... The Patricia Rose dress has been out for a fair time, I think. Mm. Nobody actually knew the pattern. It's really like calm and elegant. Mm. And it's elegant. elegant. Yeah. yeah. Even my French teacher said it was elegant. <laughs> so that was Frog Tales 2018. Yeah. And we're already excited about 2019. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what are you going to make? I have no idea what dress I'm going to make. I do really want to do a tiki dress. Like, if anyone wants to have a sewing tiki party and invite me, then I'll come. <laughs> I'll make you cocktails. I really want to do that. But I think definitely next frock tails, I want to be sewing my own underwear and lingerie for it, and I want a bag that I make. I definitely want a bag. I was and so impressed. So impressed with the bags I saw that people yeah. made. Absolutely. So Kylie yeah. in the Machine has the Ida Clutch pattern. She which has. Free, free. download. Yeah. I've downloaded mine already. Yeah, I'm. I have mine bookmarked. <laughs> and I have um, an interesting cactus print, which will not go with any dress I have actually. But a bit um, beach, maybe, or knitting yeah. project. Yeah. Well, no, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Quick grab to the cameo to watch oh, a movie. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What are you gonna wear next time? Well. I may branch out from the Patricia Rose, <laughs> or I may not. You never know. She's already made three, and you've got plans for another one. I have that got you plans told for another today. because I bought some beautiful silk yeah, with gorgeous. metal fabric from Livia Arena. Oh, so that's true then, because then you've got one that you showed me. Oh, that would be sleeveless. So, so two sort of more. So you're gonna end up with five. I don't know. I, I, but I'm, I'm keeping my eye out already. Yeah. And so thank you to the sewing community in general, yeah. Frocktails in particular, yeah. and the sponsors of Frocktails in particular, you so particular. Much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for checking out our YouTube video and we'll be back soon for some Sovina content. You'll see Katie back on here soon enough. Yes. Yeah. That was an alright high five. <laughs> Thanks Bye. guys. Cheers. We'll see you next time.